Hi, my name is Lisa Bennett, and this is my Head to Toe Assessment for Maryville University Health Assessment class. This is Phyllis Saxon, who's graciously volunteered to be my patient today. Thank you. You're welcome. Before we started, I went ahead and had her empty her bladder, remove her clothes, put on a gown. We went ahead and did her vital signs, height and weight, and a distant Snell and Vision chart, which her vision was 20-20, which was normal. Now I'm going to go ahead and have her do a near vision Jaeger chart, which I'm going to have her read the smallest line she's able to read. I was born seven years ago. Very good. Okay, and while she did that, while, while I'm looking at her, I'm looking at her skin and assessing her warmth, the color, making sure that it's pink and that. Now I'm going to go ahead and start with her head. I'm going to look at everything. Her head is upright still. Um, both sides are symmetrical in that. I'm going to look at her hair. Her hair is soft, no nits, no scaling. Um, I'm going to look along her scalp, along her hairline, make sure there's no missing hair. I'm going to go ahead and palpate her skull and her scalp. Her scalp is movable in that. Soft, I feel no neat lesions, no, no masses or that. I'm going to come around and I'm going to look at her forehead and I'm going to palpate her facial bones all the way around. I'm going to come back. I'm going to feel her temporal mandibular joint. I'm going to have you open your mouth and close and do it one more time for me. What I'm doing is I'm assessing to see if there's any popping there with her, with her jaws, in between her jaws. Now I'm going to go ahead and palpate her frontal sinus. Am I going to be pain or pressure? No. I'm going to come down her, to her ethmoid and her maxillary. Any pain or pressure? No. Okay. I'm going to look that her eyebrows are symmetrical. Her eyelashes are um, curved upward. And I'm going to go ahead and look now that her ears are symmetrical and they're in line with her eyes. We're going to go ahead and look at her eyes. I'm going to have you close your eyes for me. I'm going to palpate her lids, her eyelids and that. Okay. And you can open for me. And I'm going to go ahead while I'm here and palpate her lac lacrimal apparatus underneath her eyes. And we'll just do on one side to go ahead and do on the other. Any pain or pressure along there. And I see that there's no excessive tearing when I do that. Now I'm going to go ahead and grab the pen light and I'm going to go ahead and look at her conjunctiva on the bottom, making sure it's pink and moist. And I'm also going to look at the white, the sclera, and it's nice and white. I don't see any redness. Did that on one side and I would also do it on the other. So while I'm here, I'm going to have you stare straight ahead, and I'm going to look at her, the reaction of her pupils. And I did it on one side, saw that react. Now I'm going to watch the other side when I do this, and it also reacts, and that's called consensual, and they're both equal and reactive to light. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to have you look at my pen line, and I'm going to come in together, and her eyes both come in together, and that's called accommodation. So I would write that her pupils are equal and reactive to light and accommodation. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check her corneal light reflex, and I'm going to take the light from her top, bring the bridge of her nose, and I'm going to watch and see her eyes follow in together, and that just shows me that her eyes are um, aligned. Next, I'm going to go ahead, and I want you just to look at me. I want you to can you tell me, do you, can you feel this? Yes. Can you feel this? Yes. Can you feel this? Yes. Very good. And that's just testing sensation at the time. Now I'm going to go ahead. And if you could go ahead and look straight ahead, cover one eye for me and uncover. And go ahead and cover the other eye for me and uncover. And what I'm doing is I'm making sure that her pupils are, uh, that her eyes are aligned, facing forward, one's not lower than the other or drooping. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to cover, we're go you're going to cover the same eye as I am. And we are going to come in you know, together and you're going to tell me when you see my finger. Okay, we're gonna come from above and when. Okay, and we're also gonna come from below. We're also gonna come from the side again. Okay, and now we're gonna do the same with the other eye. Yeah. And above. Yeah. And below. Yeah. Very good. Okay. And now that we've done those, the next thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna have you look at my pen line. And I'm going to have you hold your head still and with your eyes, follow my pen line. And I will go ahead and do the same on both sides. Have it follow. Go ahead and follow my pen line. And what that's doing is that's checking the six cardinal fields of gaze. Oops, let's turn that off. Very good. So we've done our eye exam. So now what I want you to do is up close and squinch, close your eyes tight for me. Very good. I want you to raise your forehead for me. Smile. Stick out your tongue. Grit your teeth. Now puff out your teeth. Very good. 
shrug your shoulders for me. Very good. What I was doing is I was checking her um, the cranial nerves at that time. I want you to go ahead and press on my shoulder, press on my hands. Okay. Next thing I want you to just take your head over your shoulder. Do it the same on the other side. Now I want you to do it one more time and press against my hand. Very good. I want you to do it for the other side. Very good. Okay. Put your hands up for me. And now I want you to press against my hands. Very good. Pull, pull back. No, nope. turn your hands the same way. Pull back. Very good. Now I want you to press up. There you go. And do me a favor, press down. Very good. Okay. Now we're going to go on to the ears. Her ears, like I said, are in line. What I'm going to do is palpate the oracle. Any pain or pressure? I don't feel any lesions, bumps, bruises, any tenderness in your ears with that. Okay. Now I want you to go ahead and cover this ear. Um, hold that ear closed for me. What I'm going to do is whisper some numbers and some letters, three in your three in your ear, about one to two feet away, and I want you to tell me what the letters and numbers are that I tell you. A one three. Okay. Do the same for the other side. B six five. Very good. And that's just making sure that you can hear the same and equal on both sides. Now we're going to do the Weber test. I'm going to strike the tuning fork. I'm going to place it on your head. I want you to tell me if you can hear it in one ear or the other or both ears. Both. Very good. Okay, now we're going to check bone and air bone and air conduction. And what I'm going to do is strike it and I'm going to place it behind your ear. I want you to tell me when it stops. I'm going to put it beside your ear and I want you to tell me again when it stops, okay? Stop. Stop. Okay, and when you do the bone and air conduction, the air conduction should be twice as long as the bone conduction is, okay? Next, we're going to move on to the nose. The nose is symmetrical. It's in line directly between the eyes. I don't see any deviation from there. I'm going to have you go ahead and look up for me. And I'm going to look and see if the septum is deviated. I'm also going to look at this time in, in the nostrils. And I'm going to look at the mucosa. I'm going to look at the nasal hairs and the turbinates. And I'm also going to see if the septum is deviated at that time. Okay, I want you to look at me. What I want you to do is take one finger and cover one side and breathe in the other side. Okay, and do the same on the other side. You seem equal and you can get air on both sides. I'm just making sure that she can breathe and everything is normally aligned the same way. We'll go on to move to the mouth. Her mouth is pink Her um, and her her the look is asymmetrical. You can just be normal. There you go. And it's pink. Her lips are pink and moist at the time. Okay, smile for me. Show me your teeth. No, just smile. There you go. Her teeth are nice and white. Um, I'm going to go ahead and look down and around. I'm going to look at her gums. I'm going to make sure that they're nice and pink. They're not inflamed at all. And everything is clear. I'm going to have you open your mouth. I'm going to look at the hard, the soft palate, the tongue, the mucosa. And everything is pink and moist at that time. I'm also going to count the number of teeth at that time. There should be 32 if she still has her wisdom teeth intact. I'm going to go ahead and look. I'm going to go ahead and grab my tongue blade. I'm going to have her stick her tongue out for me. I'm going to look in the back. I'm going to look at the anterior pillars. I'm looking at the uvula. I'm also looking for the tonsils. Okay. I'm looking also. Okay. Open up. Look at her tongue is pink and moist. I'm going to have you press against my tongue blade against one side. Stick your tongue the other way and look, stick your tongue up. And I'm looking underneath the tongue to see if there's any signs of oral cancer, cancer at the time. Next, I'm going to have you open your mouth, stick your tongue out. Very good. And ha. say ah. Ha. Yep. And gag reflex. And I'm also going to look inside the mouth in that. And I'm also going to notice if there's any mouth odor. Mouth, mouth odor, which I don't which I don't smell any odor at that time. Um, and I had to press against each side of my tongue, and your tongue is normal and moist and fluffy, and so that's good too. So we've done the face and that. We're moving on to the neck. Her neck is smooth, supple. Her trachea is midline. I'm palpating the carotid. I'm holding one side of the trachea. I can palpate the thyroid. Holding the other side, I can palpate the thyroid. I would go ahead and go from behind, just look straight forward, and behind her, and I would palpate from the bottom up. I would palpate her thyroid. I would have her swallow. And I could also have her take a sip of water at that time and palpate the thyroid at that time. Like I said, I'm looking for any jugular vein distension at that time, which we can also, we'll talk more about in a little bit. Now I'm going to go ahead and listen. I'm going to listen. I'm going to listen to her carotids. Make sure I hear her breeze rolls that everything is regular and even. And then I would go ahead and I would, oh, sorry, with the, with the bell of my stussy coat, lifts into the carotid and to the thyroid. I was getting quick. Okay, I listened to both. And both are normal, equal. There's no real bounding at that time. Next thing I'm going to do is I have felt both sides. And so now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and do the lymph nodes. 
I'm going to do the preauricular, postauricular, occipital. I'm going to come down. I'm going to do the superficial chains, and I'm going to do the post total chains. I'm also going to do the superficial, and I'm going to come along the front. I'm going to do the tonsillar, submandibular, submental, and then put your head down the supraclavicular. And I missed the post cervical is in the in in the rear. And then I'm going to go, and then I'm going to have you lift your arm for me, and I can go here for the infraclavicular, and I can also go on both sides and feel both sides for the axillary. Okay, and I'm going to, so at this time I'm going to go ahead and notice her skin and her arms and feel it's moist in that. I'm going to notice her shoulders, her hands. Skin is moist and pink. I'm going to go down. I'm going to do her capillary refill, which is normal. I'm going to go ahead and turn her arm over at this time. I'm going to feel for her brachial pulses and her brachial radial, and then I'm going to come along and I'm going to relax her. I'm going to go ahead and do her reflexes and the brachial radio. And I would go ahead and I would do it at both sides at that time. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna inspect and I'm gonna watch her, her rate, her respirations and make sure everything is equal and non-labor and there's no, you know, she's not using any accessory muscles at that time. Now I'm gonna go ahead and, and palpate I'm for tactile fremitus. So if you say 99. 99. Again. 99. Again. 99. Again. 99. Very good. Now, just breathe for me, in and out. And I'm just feeling for expansion. Okay? <coughs> now, I'm, see, when I got that, I'm gonna make it, and I'm gonna percuss. And what I do to one side, I'm also gonna do to the other side. And I'm also gonna do it laterally on both sides. Okay? And then after I get done percussing it, I'm gonna go ahead and auscultate. So I'm going to go ahead and listen, and I'm going to just listen to her, her respiratory rate and rhythm right now, and I'm going to go ahead and listen right where I was on both sides, in all places, in all, and I'm also going to listen um, laterally on both sides, and then I'm going to come back and listen to my heart sound. I'm going to listen to aortic, which is the second intercostal, my pulmonic which is also the second intercostal on the other side. Third intercostal space is herbs point. Fourth intercostal, is, fourth intercostal space is my tricuspid. And fifth intercostal space is my um, mitral valve, my, um, my mitral. So I've listened to those. And now I would go ahead and I would feel for my apical The impulse of my apical, of the, the precardian. Apical is here, and my precardian is here. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and turn around. Sorry about that. You know, if you can turn and put your legs more that way for me. There we go. There we go. That's better. Now, I'm going to inspect and I'm going to notice her back and everything. Is, is equal, and I'm going to notice her respirations in that. I'm going to notice expansion at the time. And now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go, and if you could go ahead and say 99. 99. 99. 99. Okay. And I've gone ahead, and now I'm going to watch, go ahead and breathe for me. And I'm going to watch the thoracic expansion. Okay. I've done that. So we watch and watch her, her, um, her rate and her rhythm, and notice everything is exactly the same and balanced on both sides. So now I'm going to go ahead and percuss. And I'm going ahead and doing the lung region all the way down if she's breathing. I go all the way down and listen. And then I'm going to go back and I'm going to take, have you take a deep breath in and exhale, and then take a deep breath in again, hold it. Hold that breath, and I'm going to go down, and I'm going to pal palpate until there's, sorry, percuss until there's dullness. And when I get to that dullness, I'm going to mark that point. Go ahead and breathe. Breathe a couple of times. So you lo don't lose your air there. And now I'm going to start at the bottom. I'm going to have you inhale and exhale. 
I hold it right there, and then I palpate up till I reach dullness again. And in between those two spots, I'm going to go ahead and take my ruler, and I'm going to measure between those two spots, which should be three to five centimeters um, for my expansion. Now I'm going to my costal vertebral angle. I'm going to go ahead and, and I can go ahead and use my straight fist, and I'm going to palpate those areas. And what I'm doing is it's possible for kidney stones, pain or that, right around the kidney areas. Now I'm going to go ahead and um, go ahead and turn around. We're going to go around, and we're going to go ahead to the abdomen. OK? Modesty here. OK, first of all, I'm going to always look and inspect the abdomen. And, and before I do that, I'm going to well, the way she's laying, I'm going to look at her jugular veins in that, and I'm going to see if she has any jugular vein distension. And I can also, at that time, um, measure. Okay? Now, go ahead. And one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and, first of all, look and make sure that everything, and inspect and make sure that everything is even, you know, non-labor, that she's not using her accessory muscles in that, and not seeing that I see any pulses. Okay, if you could lift your, there you go. And I'm looking just to see if I see any hernias or anything out of the ordinary. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and listen, and I'm going to listen to all four quadrants of her abdomen. And I would listen for a minute, up to two minutes, in, in the upper and the lower quadrants, all four quadrants. And I would listen for a minute, up to two minutes, and I should be able to hear bowel sounds. And then I'm going to go in the middle and listen to my aorta. OK, and we hear that. Now I'm going to go ahead and listen to my renal arteries. And I would listen on both sides. And I would also go down and measure and listen for my iliac, both sides, and then down and listen for my femoral on both sides. Okay? And after I heard those, then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and percuss. And I'm going to start up here, residence, and come down. And what I'm doing is I'm measuring my liver borders, come down to dullness. Okay? And I'm going to mark that spot and then tippity. I'm coming down. I'm coming from the middle of my abdomen up, and I'm measuring to dullness. And that's how I can go ahead and get my liver margins, OK? And I'm also going to, while I'm down here, I'm also going to palp, um, percuss the whole abdomen while I'm here. Then I'm going to go up for residence on, this, on the opposite side and come down to dullness. And I'm going to measure again and go from the bottom up. And that's um, for the spleen on the opposite side, OK? So I've got measurement borders for my liver and my spleen, OK? Next thing I want to do is palpate. I'm going to go ahead and palpate my abdomen and make sure, lightly, and make sure everything is nice and soft in that and I don't feel anything out of the ordinary that you're having no pain, OK? And then I'm going to go ahead and palpate my liver. I'm going to breathe in and out. And now, now I'm going to go ahead and deeper. Now breathe in, deeper palpation, and I should be able to feel underneath, breathe in for me. There we go. I should be able to palpate her liver border that way. And I would go ahead and do the same thing on the other side for the spleen, um, but you probably will not be able to feel the spleen. And what I would do is lift her up, on, lift up on that side. No, don't turn all the way for me. Just I just lift up on that side, and I would also pal do some deeper palpation just to see if it was possible if I could feel the spleen. Go ahead and turn this way for me, and flex your knees and bend. Very good. And then I could hold this side, and I could also come around here and feel and see if it's possible if I could feel the spleen. OK, lay back for me. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to feel underneath, and I'm going to palpate, do some deeper palpation, see if, if I can find the kidneys. And I'll go ahead and do the same on both sides. OK, and, I've done, and I don't feel them on that side. And I'm going to feel um, in the middle now for my aortic pulsation, midline. And I'm also look at her and feel and just note, note her abdominal muscles on both sides. And we did lift before and did not see any hernias or that at that time. So then we're done inspecting our abdomen. So you can go ahead and sit up for me. And now we're going to look at her lower legs in that. And we're just going to make sure we're going to inspect her skin, her hair, um, her muscle mass, her thighs. Here, let me turn this down. There, so you can see her legs. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just looking, you know, I'm looking at the hair on her legs. I'm also looking at the muscle mass there and in, and in, her, um, in her thigh region. Um, I'm noticing the temperature. You know, I'm noticing if there's any edema in that. I'm going to come down, and I'm going to 
uh, find her pulses. I'm a popliteal behind, behind her knee, dorsal tibia, and then, uh, what am I thinking? Oh, um, sorry, posterior tibia is behind, and then the dorsal pedius on top. And what I did on one, I would also go back and I would do on the other. Okay? I would do all those at that time, and I would come back up now, and I would go ahead and I would do her reflexes. Since I did the, ra the radial and the brachial earlier, I'm going to just relax your legs. I'm going to go ahead and do her, and I would do the both sides. I would go ahead and do um, her, her knees, and then I would go ahead and go behind. Oh, oh, hold up a foot. If I, if I did this and I had it down, I would go in the back and I would go ahead and do her Achilles in the back. Okay, if I could have you stand for me now. And no, just look at, uh, yeah, that's good. You can turn around. That's even better. Okay, what I'm going to have her do is bend and touch her toes. I'm looking at her cervical. I'm going along and looking at her lumbar region and her back. Okay, and up. And to see if she can touch her toes in her cervical spine, her lumbar spine. You can turn around if you can squat for me. You squat down and back up. And as now I'm going to have you turn, uh, keep your feet straight, turn, and then turn the other way. Okay? One side, that's right, one side, and then do the other side. Right. And what I'm doing, and go forward and backwards, what I'm doing is assessing um, her movement and her skeletal muscles in that. In between. I'm also going to have, she can also lift up her legs, lift up her knees. She can also um, do rotation in her feet you know, and, and around to make sure she can make circles. She can also lift out her arms, put her arms out. She can also make circles with her arms, her hands, just to make sure that she has good range of motion just like we did in her neck. And thank you. That concludes my video and I appreciate you watching.